Coming up, we'll see two teams looking to bounce back from disappointing seasons a year ago, as it'll be the Carolina Panthers playing host to the Dallas Cowboys. I'll be back with you at halftime with a look at the other games that are going on. But now let's get up to Charlotte. Standing by, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you. EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. A short time ago, a scene that never fails to stir up the folks here in Charlotte. Cam Newton's strutting his way onto the field. His guys are fired up as they get set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. And I don't think from what we saw down on the field before the game, there's any doubt they're ready to roll. They pass the eye test, don't they? This team looks fired up and ready to play. Meanwhile, for the visitors here, the Cowboys, an early season tilt. And when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet. And both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. No more training camp, no more exhibitions. The 2018 NFL season on EA Sports is underway. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Cowboys now ready to go on offense for the first time. They'll be brought out by a man who hails from Sulphur, Louisiana. Played his college ball at Mississippi State. The quarterback, Dak Prescott. The numbers he put up as a rookie outstanding but were they really truly sustainable remember they were 13 and 3 as rookie sees they end up going 9 and 7 in 2017 how about they went from four interceptions in 2016 as a rookie to 13 his second year these are numbers that you didn't expect to stay the same but i do expect dak prescott to continue to get better and better as a quarterback in the nfl now the for Ezekiel Elliott, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. In on the tackle there, Luke Keekley. And the big boys up front in the trenches, what do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them, because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Prescott now on second down. And that'll be incomplete. He was looking to get it to Allen Hearns that time. Third down. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. chance to get off the field here in the opening drive couldn't do it. I know that we go to these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized, the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and ten. On first and ten, Prescott. Wide open, Amari Cooper. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 11 more on that one and another first down. And a nice start there to the aerial attack to pick up the first. 
and I think preseason is officially over now. Getting into the groove of the regular season, that's a great way to get started. First drive of the season, what a nice completion. Flush to his right. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be taken down inside Carolina's 15. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. A first down carry by Elliott. And he stopped immediately there. Calling no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a real priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line scrimmage. That's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. He has elite instincts for his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run, flies in like a missile, he stopped that one behind the line of scrimmage. They'll try to run in without him, and he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense. Countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. This Carolina defense looking to keep him out of the end zone once more. Third and goal. Here's Elliott. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. A loss of a yard and it brings up four. Brandon, I know what I've been doing this situation. You're on the road. It's the opening drive. You've gotten all the way down here. Go for it. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Cowboys are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? More now on the return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. They will be led out by their starting quarterback since his arrival back in 2011. It's Cam Newton. One of the great physical specimens that's ever played the quarterback position in the NFL is not just the numbers that he generates, it's the threat of what he can do. You have to play him not just for the pass, but for the run and getting him on the ground in either situation, a very difficult task for any defense. Now a carry, it's C.J. Anderson, and he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. And here now the offense for Carolina. By now you know I love running backs, and C.J. Anderson caught my eye in a big way in 2017. His first 1,000-yard season on the ground, a little bit over 1,000 yards with 1,007, but over 1,200 yards from scrimmage, so you know you can catch it out of the backfield as well. An exciting runner, a powerful runner, and a guy who can be physical when necessary. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. And this is caught. It's Greg Olson. Olsen, and he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Greg Olson, 68 yards. And the Panthers are going to take a first quarter lead. 
Charles, that was a heck of a play. It truly was because when he made that catch, he had to shake through some people, right? So that play, to me, a highlight film that should be accompanied by bass music, right? <laughs> I mean, boom, boom, boom. And he finds his way to the end zone. Terrific play. Extra point try, good by Gano. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Gano out to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. Out comes the Cowboys offense. The wild optimism going into last season, of course, because they were coming off that 13-3 year, but they faded a bit last year as they dropped you a good but not great 9-7. The good thing for Dallas, they play in a pretty volatile division, the NFC East. He hasn't been a repeat champion in the East since 2003-2004, and that was Philadelphia, who currently holds the crown right now. But this is a Dallas team that I think has worked its way through some adversity. They've lost some key veteran players along the way the last two years. So the face of the franchise, actually the face is quarterback Dak Prescott, but to me, the guy who really makes them go, running back Ezekiel Elliott. If they get 16 out of him, expect Dallas to be in the thick of things. A second down throw for Prescott. This one caught left side by Cooper. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll try to sweep it. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Shaq Thompson on the tackle that time. I know the scouting report on him is that he didn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Prescott to throw it. And he's got his big tight end over the middle, complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Now a play fake here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Dontari Paul. Breaking through to get him for a loss of seven. This Carolina D was third in the NFL in sacks last year. And sometimes that surprises people when they hear that because who's the dominant pass rusher that you think of putting up double-digit sacks? They do it collectively as a unit and get to the quarterback. Following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Hey, 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 hey. Go. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Now Prescott rolling to his right. He's got it to her. Just shy of the 20. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. 
Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. Prescott now, option right. Stepping up, he'll try and run. Had a good move, but only able to work it to the 20-yard line. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Throwing, Prescott, buying time to his left. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. Mario Addison able to drop him for a loss of four. Well, that's the second time he's been sacked so far in the first half. And if they have designs on having a big year, on going anywhere, they've got to find a way to keep him back right so they can throw the football. On third down, it's Prescott. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold him to three. And his kick is indeed good. And they'll get it back within a point at seven to six. So two first quarter field goal attempts for him, and he's converted on both. I like the positive right there. Two for two, got the points on the board. The negative side is they didn't score touchdowns. And of course, going forward in this game, that's going to be the aim. And hopefully, they'll be kicking extra points instead. More now to return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. We turn our attention to the Panthers as they come out here on offense, and it's been an interesting three-year run. You, you look back to their Super Bowl appearance, then they dropped to 6-10 and ten a couple of years ago. Last year, back in the playoffs with 11 wins. So what in 2018? I think a continuation of 2017 and an expansion on what we saw. It's always going to be a tough-minded team. They want to run the ball inside, and Cam Newton can be your short yardage runner as well as play the quarterback position and throw it. But they want to open things up. Remember, they drafted Christian McCaffrey last year, want to get him the ball in open space. They ended up drafting DJ Moore this year, so they want to be more explosive down the field throwing the football. And Luke Keekley is a heck of a building block on defense. This is a team that fully expects to contend in the NFC South, and they think they can go much deeper in the playoffs. And he'll taken down, but not before he works past the 50. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Coming in, he really liked his chance of having a big year based on a terrific offseason. And runs like that on opening weekend show that he's right. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. So one quarter in the books on NFL kickoff weekend. 7-6 our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. Nice connection here with Ian Thomas, the rookie out of Indiana. And he's one of those guys that I truly believe his best football is ahead of him. Always he's been a consistent blocker. His receiving gets better and better. I thought in 2017 with IU, he was terrific. And now, and he gives a great addition to Carolina Panthers passing game. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. So third and two, this quite possibly four-down territory, though, if they're stopped. Newton now to throw. Looking for Funches, but 
intercepted. Cheetah Bay Louisier with a pick. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. And not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. And maybe war down the other defense. We'll see. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. And that one goes incomplete. They tried something out of the bag of tricks. But it's incomplete, and now second down. Tim carry now for Elliott. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. He really hasn't been able to get on track running the football, averaging less than four yards a carry. You think that they're going to enjoy the film session because all the defenders are throwing their proper gaps on just about every play. And you know what they always say for a defensive coach, when I cut off this pill, I better see 11 jerseys in the picture going after the ball carry. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. A tale of two extremes already in this game. A touchdown pass on their opening drive, followed by an interception last time out. Now it sounds like things balance out, right? What's that, that mythological thing that we do? If you have a candy bar, have a diet soda with it, it balances it out. And we know that's not really true, right? Because the interception, that sting lingers a little bit longer. Got to come out now and put together some nice plays. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. This one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. At this stage of the game, the run pass number one, because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that, because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They run again on first down. Anderson. Siege. 20. 10. Touchdown, Carolina. C.J. Anderson, 61 yards. And the Panthers are able to grow their lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Gano the extra point, and the lead is up to eight. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it's C.J. Anderson who tops it off with the touchdown run. Gano out to kick this one away. Set to return now. Here's Deontay Thompson. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. This offense trots back out there now. And as they do, Charles, one thing to point out that we saw a second ago are some of the new rules in the NFL this year regarding kickoffs. Yeah, nowadays, the kickoff team, no more running starts. Remember that when you can you kind of circle a guy around and here he goes? 
no more. You have to start, you know, close to the ball, and when it's kicked, then you get to take off and go, so you can't build up your speed that way. Also, when you're returning it, remember those wedges that we used to say where guys were formed together, two or three guys? No more of those, so it'd be a lot more man-on-man, one-on-one blocking. And also, they have rules about where people have to be when the ball's kicked, where they have to be when the ball's caught. So to me, it's much more like a punt return than it is an actual kickoff return. So I'm eager to see if teams now take their punt returners, those nifty guys who make people miss in the open field, and make them the kickoff returners as well. Because I think you can still get big plays in this area if you have the right. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. You know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The Cowboys on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and five. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And an alley to run. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. Someone knew exactly where he needed to get to pick up that first down now. I'm not so sure about the technique in getting there, but he went for it, and he got it. Exactly. He knew where he needed to get, because remember, if he slides, when that derriere dips, if you will, that play's over. The derriere dips, I like that one. Yeah, been working on it for a little bit. football game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Again to Elliott. Looking for an opening. Not much there. He'll get it to the 39. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. The Cowboys on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be a tough third and 18. Prescott from the gun. Flushed out right. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. Oh, Prescott stripped. And the Panthers have recovered. Now, let's be frank. You hate the fumble at the end of the play. But prior to that, I liked a lot of what was going on. Tucks it down, takes off, picks up good yardage. But in that portion of the field, that close to the sideline, step out. Yeah, either get down or get out of bounds. Take care of the ball. Yeah, he had the yards, but then the mistake. Getting set to go again here. Cam Newton marches back onto the field. Yeah, they have had success on the ground, really as a team, doing well carrying the football. So maybe a little less pressure on his shoulders as the quarterback. Any pressure he's carrying right now, that's self-inflicted, right? He's taking it on. He doesn't need to. Continue to do what you just said. Let everyone else carry the football. That's been effective. Don't have to worry about him throwing the ball at all the situations now. That's got to be a good feeling if he just relaxes and lets it keep coming to him. Yeah, and relax and enjoy the second quarter lead right now. He's going to keep it and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. On second down, here's Newton. And the tight end Olsen right side. 
And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. First down. Here's the run with Anderson. And room there to work it inside the 25. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Now Cam, option left. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. It's a loss of four. Now third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. Throwing on third down, Newton. And he finds a man, it's Olsen. And he's brought down after a very nice game. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Well, they've been practicing goal line offense all week. Let's see if they're able to capitalize here. To throw is Newton. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Ian Thomas with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Panthers add on to their lead. So we just witnessed touchdown number one for the Rook, and certainly that's a football he's going to want for the trophy game. Yeah, this is one that you don't spike, right? This is one you don't throw to your teammate and let them celebrate. This is one you keep for yourself, take it over to the equipment staff and have them mark it up, put it away, and then you get it later on, and as you said, mount it in your trophy case. Fantastic. Hopefully the first of many. Gano out to kick this one away. Here's Thompson to return it. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. Now, I'm not going to say you completely abandon the passing game, but it would really behoove them to get this running game going more. That's the identity most teams are seeking, able to establish themselves, control the game by running it, have to touch it multiple times in order to have success in this game. As we say, yeah, that's right. As we say all the time, that sets up the passing game. I feel like a broken record with that. Listen, we can be a broken record all we want. Bottom line is, lather up that big horse <laughs> and let him run. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. A reminder coming up at the half. We hook up with a new guy, Jonathan Coachman from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis, and more importantly this year, scores and stats from around the league here in week one. So do not press that skip button. All start offense. Now they nab the rookie there for the five-yard penalty. So much going through his head. You know it just has to be, right? All of his Still assignments and realizing every game he plays, one of the better players in the league will be opposite him. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Here's Prescott. And his throw is incomplete. The all-pro linebacker Luke Keekley right there on the coverage, stride for stride. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter. A lot of time to change things. They'll set the screen to Elliott, and he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. And now we 
and get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Rush comes and they block it. It's picked up. Remember, the ball is live. And that's truly the way to change field position, isn't it? Block the punt and then take over inside the five-yard line. What a tremendous job by them. You change momentum, you change field position, and give yourself a chance to score. Cam Newton getting ready to go again on offense. And he's looked pretty good. Does have the one interception, but two touchdown passes so far. Your analysis. They'll take the offset. When you talk about throwing two touchdown passes, no one wants to see an interception thrown, but those things happen in the course of a ball game and over the course of a season. But throwing two touchdown passes, that's why the team has an advantage. That's what they're looking for more of. He'll be hoping to make it a three-to-one ratio here in the second quarter. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. slinging in the first half. You expect everything he throws to go for a touchdown, but I guess he's got to, have to wait to try and pick up that third, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he had him for a second, but you're right not to be. Boy, you'd hate to squander this great field position. Here's third and goal. A shotgun snap for Newton. Escaping the pressure right. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. Well, partner, nothing comes open here, so he decides to escape out of there, and he doesn't pick up a first down, but he does gain additional yardage to set up a possible field goal attempt if they decide to go that route. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens. That was the old bend but don't break approach. Make sure they contain them when they absolutely had to and force the field goal attempt that went through. And they go block in the back. Return team. So that will push him back. First down. And now we know why I have a little extra space to run, don't we? An illegal block in the back, that penalty will move them back. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. The give is to Elliott. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend as we'll check in for the first time with the newest member of our Madden family. It's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon. All right, we will save the week one highlights and apparently get right back to the action here in the third. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. More now on the return. Fights him off. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. A first look at the NFL scoreboard comes from down in Arizona. And the Redskins there out to an early lead. Alex Smith with two first-half touchdown passes. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at their 35-yard line. The third quarter starts with a run from Anderson. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Now 
Newton on first down. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. From the gun, here's Newton. And his pass incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target, and it's third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But you have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And he gets it to Vinches quickly. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Demarcus Lawrence in on the tackle. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. Again, Anderson. He takes it to the 15. A flashy move, but little to show for it. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. And this is going to be incomplete. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will extend their lead even further. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially... An extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? A different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. To throw is Prescott. He sets to fire deep. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. Here's Elliott. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. They only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Prescott from the gun on third. Dancing to his left. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A good decision in the end to pull it and run, get some nine yards and a first. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. 
They'll run it now. Out of the gun. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. A first down throw for Prescott. And Beasley with it over the middle. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. A gain of six there on first. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now back to the ground with Elliott. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Prescott looks to throw on first. And now he'll tuck it and run. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. On first and 10, and Prescott incomplete. The all-pro linebacker Luke Keekley right there on the coverage, stride for stride. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. A second down throw for Prescott. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Holding offense. Down in this one, they needed that score. Still second but down. They'll have to hold at least for the time being. You're exactly right. Points that they had to have. As you said, they have to regroup now and see if they can get them another way. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Now a handoff, running off, tackle right. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. A good positive play there, nine yards, but still third and long. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On third down, it's Prescott. Got his man, it's Williams. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves them just short for fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. They'll run it with Elliott. And he 
Takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Oh, he's not going to get it by much, but on fourth and one, all you're worried about is moving the sticks. And here he's able to fight his way forward for a couple of yards, and that's all he needed. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back into 24. Gone after the sack. He's still down on the field. Huh, hate to see this. Week one of the season. We'll be back. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Set. Green, 39. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. The Cowboys on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This will be third and forever. Operating from the gun, rush. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. So his third field goal of the ball game brings him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And sevens, and probably even eights. You know, as a kicker, you just head out when you're called upon, so he's done his job. It's the rest of the offense that needs to get in get They want to close this gap. And a very nice return up to the 35, but was it aided by something illegal? illegal Let's find out. Return team. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. That often runs you into a penalty. They go play action here on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. Tim carry now for Angel. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. But for... Oh, and this is going to wind up a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. At some point, we're going to get it through our heads. Special teams, special teams, special teams. The spark that often wins games. Now we look at C.J. Anderson as he trots back out there and gets set to go on offense. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. From the 50, Newton. 
He's got a man wide open. It's Macklin. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 23 yards on the play. Newton now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. We are through three quarters here on NFL kickoff weekend. It's the Panthers out in front and in control of the football as well as we begin quarter number. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. He can't get him down. Pushing tacklers aside. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. They run it again with Anderson. Eventually wrangled down before reaching the 20, but a strong run. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. yardage and be backed up to the 24. And a loss of three to bring up four. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think because they're so cohesive. Defensive line linebackers really work well together. And Gano's kick is right through. And that lead will move from 20 up now to 23. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you gotta like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side. Maybe a little gas. Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Prescott to throw it. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That one good for 15 and a first. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Prescott on first down. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. On the counter, Elliott, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, 
these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Flush to his right. And this is incomplete. Jason Garrett might be wanting to reconsider the decision to go for it there. And this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they did. Anderson loses the football. And the Cowboys have recovered. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. Didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. And now here come the Cowboys. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that loosens up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Pro Bowler there for the tackle. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. Room here to run. CJ with a nifty move. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Another toe here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. On this day, in his, but at least on that. On third down, that's Anderson. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. So out comes the field goal team once more. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will make the lead now 26. 
So he splits the uprights and has to be a nice feeling. Right when it left his foot, I knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. Here's Thompson on the return. A beautiful fake. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And on that last drive, Whitford on fourth turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held him to three. But this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened. You think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. They'll run with Elliott. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Tackle made by Thomas Davis. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A big gain of 31 on third down. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. First down, Prescott. He's going to go deep for Beasley. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on to it second down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Looking to throw, Prescott. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20 yard line. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard, and you probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there right, against zone? Right, right. But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. This is Elliott. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm like, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Cowboys cut into that lead. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just haven't been able to punch it in until that point. Point after, right down the middle. And that will shave one more off this lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Time for us to spotlight C.J. Anderson. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably gotten some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. 
as Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. On third down. That's Anderson. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. And now Anderson is slow to get up. Staying down after that last play. Huh, hate to see this. Week one of the season. We'll be back. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he'll punt it away for the second time. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Now Elliott looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Stop made there by Julius Peppers. As huge a threat as Ezekiel Elliott is with the ball in his hands in the run game, I have to believe that the Cowboys want to continue to expand him in the passing game. Excellent hands, can run nice routes. They don't just have to throw it to him on screens either. They can make him an integral part of the passing game and increase their offense. 58 catches through his first two years, so you expect that total to go up. I think that he can get 58 catches in one year if they choose to concentrate on it. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing, often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And partner, this first week, this first game that we get to call together, so special every year, week one. You had the flyover, the big American flag out there before the game, all the hoopla, just having football back, so special. It is an opening day, opening game. There's just nothing like it because you really build to a crescendo. But the best part for us is that crescendo Opening game, entire season, we get into the playoffs, to the Super Bowl. I was really excited. I could barely sleep last night. I can't imagine being a player. So for the Panthers, that'll be a happy locker room as they start this season 1-0. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Meanwhile, for the Cowboys, they obviously fall.